Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we're going to take a look at Dwarf Romantic. Alright, I'm going to show you how this game plays solo. It's a solo cooperative game by nature, so it plays identically, honestly. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, it really should be played solo only. But let's go ahead and give you um, a little preview of the game, a couple of turns, and then we'll tell you what I think. Alright. Okay, folks, and as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And if you have, I really appreciate that support you've been giving me. So thank you. So this game, like I said, is fully cooperative. It's really fully solo. It's a tile laying game, okay? And the way you score points in this game is by completing tasks in these different categories, these three, plus some flag tasks, plus a longest railroad, a longest stream or river, and then you will score points based on anything you've unlocked throughout your game progress to get additional points and higher scores. Why are you trying to do this? Because the whole game revolves around, uh, it's like a, a game inside a game, the, it revolves around the campaign. And what you're trying to do is the higher your score, the uh, higher up you can move on this you know, score track, and the more X's you can cross off, and when you get to one of these areas, which doesn't count as an X, it's just one, two, and then you unlock it, you then will do what it says, like open box number one. And box number one will contain more content, and the content will be varied, and it'll help you, you know, score higher and do other things and give you more goals to work with. So I'm going to, right now, I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm going to show you a very minor thing at the end, to help you understand like an example of that content, okay? But let's just go ahead and play a couple of turns. So the first thing you have to do is you have to start out with drawing three of these task tiles, okay? When you draw a task tile, you flip it over and you look and see, okay, what task category does it have? You then flip over a task category, put it on there and then place it out on the board. And in this game, <clears throat> the way the gist of everything works is that any side of any tile can line up, but you're trying to do greater, um, you know, different tiles that have matching sides to be able to complete these tasks. So for instance, here, if I want to get this six point task, I have to put together six tiles that are touching, that contain the, uh, a continuous path of um, town tiles, right? So I'm gonna flip another one over, just kind of give you an example. Here, there is nothing on the town. Um, and this is a wood uh, woods one. And so I can put this anywhere I want. Well, I don't want to conflict on this, so I'm going to kind of put it over there. Now, there is one rule about placement. You have to make sure that um, if you're placing a river or a railroad, it can't dead end into something like this. That's not allowed, right? But it doesn't matter if this woods stops right there and goes into a plane or it stops right there and goes into the you know, pasture or anything like that. You also can't um, put down a tile that does a task if it's going to be incompatible with the existing thing. Uh, and, and you can see that in the rules, but basically it just keeps you from not having to like cycle more through and deal with um, kind of like early discard tougher tasks. Okay, but I'm not gonna get into that specific because I don't need to to give you the feel for this game. All right, so here, this is lucky. I've got something that gives me some, um, some more field. And so now I've got stuff that has three different tasks out there. And once there's three out there, then you start drawing from these landscape tiles. Once I will complete a task, then I would get this point, okay, or this thing, and it would be worth that many points to the end of the game. And then I'd have to draw another task tile. So you can only ever have three different tasks going on, at least in the base, like in the beginning of the game. Maybe later on the campaign, you could do other things. Okay, so now I've got this river, so I've got a choice. I could keep going on my longest river here, or maybe I want to put it on like this, and that will give me an opportunity. Maybe I can connect that later, um, or I could try to do, you know, something like this, do a similar thing. We're just going to put that down here for now. And as you can see, it's very simple. You're basically just continually drawing tiles and putting them out in this landscape. And then eventually, hopefully, you will find a way to complete what you're doing. That doesn't really help. But <clears throat> so let's see, look, let's give you an example. So here I have one, two, three, four. If I were to put it there, 
This task would no longer be possible to complete and I would discard this. I wouldn't score it, but I would discard it. So I'm not gonna do that, but I can't do this either because I can't have the river go into this railroad. So I'm actually gonna put that anywhere over here. I will try something different. I'll put it up <clears throat> here in the hopes that maybe I can wrap something around and still connect it or do something like that. And so that is the kind of decision space you are working with. Actually, that was a terrible spot because now I might not get the railroad that has the um, thing on there. I, I really goof that up. But that's what you've got to do in this game, right? It's not overly complex, but you can make silly mistakes like that that aren't going to help you one bit. So let's say you draw one of these flags. The flags will score one point for every type of, like this is red flag, at least one point for every town tile once the town tile kind of closes down in the old Carcassonne fashion, right? Oh, almost. So we were close there. That could have been a good tile if it was uh, well behaved. It is not well behaved. Um, so you can see kind of what's going on. And I'd like to just finish. I'm flapping my jaw here. Oh, that's close too, but not what I'm looking for. I'd like to finish one of these if I could, just to kind of give you an idea of the scoring. So if I put that there, I'm going to be kind of hemming myself in. And so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think I'd rather just continue this rail area over here. All right. Okay. So that would have been better, but no dice. And as you can see, pretty simple in regards to what you're doing in this game, but not a complete. Okay. So it's the inverse of what I need. And I guess that's the way it's going to have to be. So I'm going to forfeit this six because I'll never be able to get a tile that puts the rail over what I was doing now that I think about it. So I have one, two, three, four. That means this is closed out. I can't do it. I set it off to the side. Now I have to draw another task. That's not the end of the world. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes it's worth kind of going through that situation. Here, I've got the water and I was supposed to draw this first. Now I have six water. And so let's see if that will do something here to make it a little bit easier for me to deal with. Yeah, we're really not coming out of the gate strong here. <clears throat> so it's not necessarily a foregone conclusion that you'll just skate on by and be able to do everything you want to do in this game by just playing tiles, because obviously sometimes they're, they don't, you know, they don't line up with you. And I don't know if there's a tile here that is a railroad or, um, a railroad and a river. So that might be a tough one. But one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to put something here that's going to force me into some kind of tile that doesn't exist. So I'm going to be careful. I'm going to set this over here. And if I'm lucky, I'll get a different, well, hopefully I'll get to close this up here pretty soon. I'll get a tile that will help me, um, you know, that will fix something that will give me a quick scoring opportunity. So that's also something you're trying to do. So do I have anything that's ready to be shut down here? I could do that, um, and that, again, it's going to be, let's do this. So if I put this over here, I have one, two, three, four. So I just need one more tile with forest. Here we go. All right, five. So now I will score this tile. That will be mine for the end of the game. We'll just kind of set it aside here, and I'll draw another task. This one is a wheat Field, and this one is a four. So I can't put it here because that would already be too big. So that's part of the rules you're not allowed to do. But I can put it here. And since I put it here, I've got one, two, three, four, all set to go, immediately score it. And that's the kind of thing you're trying to do if you can't quite get anything else done. You know, something fortuitous like that. <clears throat> here we have another um, river tile. So I'll put it over here and then maybe I'll draw another one and we'll get some good luck here. But as you can see, this is kind of the gameplay situation you're working with. And here, um, this, is, this is an unfortunate situation. So if I do this, I forfeit the six points, okay? And I don't know if I want to forfeit the six points, but I can't really work it out to anywhere else. So I'm going to do that, and it's going to make this a weaker score. It's only going to be two points, but I'd rather try to get the six, if at all possible. So you get the idea of what's going on here. That is basically the gist of the game. Now, let me just give you a small spoiler 
of one of the things that you unlock. So this is a spoiler. So if you don't want to see this, you can jump ahead to my review. Um, but all I'm going to show you is that once I unlocked box one, I got this little heart token. And this heart token says that I can play this on a tile when I first put down the tile. And I will get one point for every tile that matches like so. So if I can match the exact landscape here, <clears throat> I will then score points. And if I can score, in this case, there's a condition, there's a goal that says, if you are able to score six points from one red heart at the end of the game, turn the card over and unlock this achievement. And that is kind of the way these achievements go together, okay? So I just showed you that. I don't think it's that big of a spoiler, but in case it was, I just made sure you knew about it. All right, let me go ahead and tell you what I think. So you can see why I say this is really a solo only game. I can't imagine anybody really want to sitting down and and discussing too much. Maybe maybe two players, maybe like a couple or whatever could do that, but it's not a game you'd bust out and have six people argue over where to put the tile or anything like that. They say it goes from 1 to 6, but let's be serious. I think that there that would just slow the game down and it would be kind of silly. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think this is just a solo game only. And the the type of game you can see is it's a very relaxing game, okay? This is a good game to stimulate your brain when you've had a long day and you don't want to do something that's really rules intensive. The rules are very light. It doesn't mean that the choices are obvious and simple and whatever, because as you see, as I was putting those things down, I could have chosen different things. I have some discussion or I have some decisions to make whether I give up on certain um, tasks or not. And the game ends once you either, um, well, once you finish placing all of the landscape tiles, those are the ones that don't have the tasks on them, it ends. So if you end up placing all those out and you didn't do a lot of tasks, you're going to have a low score. So you're trying your best to complete the tasks as fast as possible so you can get more tasks and get higher scores. And the higher score you get, the more X's you can draw on the campaign thing, the more things you unlock. So that's kind of the trope here. Each game is going to be a little bit different if you unlock something. It'll be a little bit different as the things come out. Uh, but it's really, it seems to be the same type of gameplay. But it's stimulated enough to be a fun game. I don't think it does anything ridiculously um, over the top. And I think it would almost be a, it wouldn't be very much fun to play if there was no campaign. But I like the idea of shooting for a higher score for a reason. The higher the score, the more I get to unlock. And that thing gets, that's fun. I like the fact that the, the campaign uh, sheets that you get, you got a ton of them. I mean, I'm not going to go through this many, but I still appreciate that instead of just having one campaign sheet printed on the back of the rule book and they say, yeah, make copies. I mean, that was nice of them to throw that in there. And this is a very affordable game as well. So ultimately speaking, I think you get a good value here. If you're looking for a fairly light, relaxing solo experience, where you can learn this thing in a matter of 20 minutes and play it in a matter of, you know, 20 to 30 minutes and not have to agonize over it, but still have choices that are worth doing and still have a lot of fun. So that's what I think about it. If you like this kind of thing, it's for you. If you didn't like or were kind of ho-hum about what you saw here, it probably isn't. It's that simple because I'm sure that even though you're going to unlock different, different types of things and they kind of talk about it, it's, you know... <clears throat> And it'll, it'll still be related to the mechanics. They talk about different things with different distances and different groupings of stuff and how you maybe close things off or whatever on the score sheet. But I'm excited just to see what that is and to try to work that into the next future gameplays as I unlock them. So that's the size of it. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody. And whatever you decide to do in the future, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. I will say this one more thing. This is not a tedious game to score because um, someone asked me that earlier. Because you have the categories and you're really just, you know, scoring for those things, it doesn't take any longer to score it than you would a, a Cascadia or, um, you know, something of that nature. It's, it's fairly straightforward. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. Take it easy now.